So I wanted to talk a bit more about our Johnson Sioux, what they call bioreactor, which is just a tote that in this case, like I commented in the previous video, we lined with this orange nylon mesh fencing, which turned out to be too porous. You can see now we've got the four inch tubes in place and some bags over the top to keep the material from going in there. But we've taken the bedding pack material from the barn and mixed in the wood chips and leaves from a maple tree, chipped up maple tree, and wetted all the material. We actually ran an oscillating fan sprinkler on it for a, for a day or two. And if you take a look here, I'm going to grab a sample of this material and squeeze it as hard as I can. I do not get a drop coming out, but um, it is fairly wet. Now, here's one of the issues is, is you know, they say 60 to 70 percent moisture content. But that, in my opinion, also depends on the type of material you're talking about. So when David Johnson mixes up stuff, mixes up materials, you'll notice it's very high in carbon. And if you've got a lot of brown, brown dry material, particularly wood chips and more bulky material like that that doesn't absorb water very much, he actually drenches the material, and I can show you that in a bit. But if you've got other material that's, like in this case, you know, we've got some manure from the bedding pack, or you've got smaller materials like sawdust or leaves uh, and grass, dry leaves and grass. My feeling is, is you want to be that this type of moisture might might be enough, maybe a little, this might be a little on the dry side. We do have the wood chips in there. So, you know, if it's smaller materials, maybe you want to run 60%. If it's more bulky materials, dried bulky materials, you may want to run 70%. Um, I want to go ahead and show you this video by David Johnson, Professor David Johnson, as he was making his bioreactor. Sorry, I'm just closing this window. As he was making his bioreactor. So you can see here in the background, he's got leaves and needles, dried leaves and needles. And he has said that, uh, especially on the smaller materials like grass and this, and needles and so on that he prefers them to be dry uh, otherwise they get too hot and they compact too much actually and in the foreground here he's got a bucket of smaller wood chips so this is all high very high carbon to nitrogen ratio I mean the wood chips are 400 to 1 I don't know what the leaves and needles are but it's got to be 100 plus to 1 and um, by the way, he mentions that if you, for the leaves and needles like this, that you actually run them through a chipper sh shredder, or if you're on a farm, maybe a bale grinder or something like that to open them up. I think we're going to actually just throw them out. We're not, this year we're going to make up one or two totes. I think we're going to throw our leaves out on the lawn and just run over them with a lawnmower some to kind of break them up. But I'm going to go ahead and play this video a bit, a bit so he's showing the size of the wood chips and then you know this is a lot of a lot of brown dry carbon yeah but here is what he does to actually wet the material so it's so dry and he's out west which is really dry so He's actually just, for a short period of time, whatever amount of time it takes for him to empty and then refill that black, small black tote with blow with more material um, and put it in his buckets and put it in the tote. He's soaking this material. So 
I think that's fine for that sort of application. You know, you get quite a bit of water on there, but the material has quite a bit of capacity to absorb water. So, but if you had, like I said, if it was more dried grasses and not as much wood chips and so on, you may want to reduce your moisture content. So I also want to show you this, uh, some notes I took. This was a video by Jay Young from the Young Red Angus Farm. And I recommend you look at this video uh, on the Johnson Sioux Bioreactor, Why Your Ingredients Matter. And he's actually tried multiple different combinations of materials. Here he's got Reactor 2, Reactor 3, Reactor 4, Reactor 5, and you can see what's in each of those reactors. In a lot of cases, they tend to overheat. Um, he thinks it has to do with the uh, green grass clippings um, and certainly the amount of horse manure or manure that's in there makes a difference in how fresh it is and so on. But you don't want to have too many small materials and grass clippings definitely are going to go hot. So, yeah, I would agree with him that you got to be careful when you're with your greens, particularly when they're really small. I also want to mention that um, you know, as you're making up your mix, I've seen different guys talk about putting in mycorrhizal fungal spore, fungi spores into their compost mix because you can buy mycorrhizal fungi. Uh, it comes as a powder, essentially as a powder, and uh, to try try and help to get the microbial action going, but. Mycorrhizal fungi only exist when there's a plant. So you are not going to get mycorrhizal fungi to take off in, I do not think you're going to be able to get it to take off in uh, a Johnson Sioux bioreactor or compost tea for sure if you're doing compost tea. Um, it, ju it just doesn't happen. It needs those sugars, those exudates from plants. Um, and Although I have to say I can see why they do that because mycorrhizal fungi are really important. I mean, they are the key players in the vast majority of plants on this planet. Uh, they are a key player in communicating and feeding the plant with the micronutrients that it needs. But like I said, I don't think it helps to add it to your compost because I don't think it's going to take off in your compost. Although, you know, those spores will sit there and um, they will be activated once they're applied in furrow and the plant sprouts up. So um, I've commented on this before, but I just want to say it again. You know, if you look at what the picture here, what David Johnson, Professor Johnson is using. I mean, these are materials like what you would find on the forest floor or the floor of woods. It's very high carbon, and I think that's the direction to go because ultimately we're shooting for a compost that has a really high fungal count and brown carbons are primarily broken up by fungi in nature. So you are going to get a lot of fungi going through there, eating this material up. And like I said before, when it reaches the end of its life because the food sources are gone and it dies out, it will sporulate. And those spores will be in very high number in that compost that then get placed in furrow in the form of an extract that you're dripping with your seeds and be waiting, sitting, waiting there. Um, by the way, when you do your compost, a couple points that I think are important to make mention of is, you know, they water this compost. So you need a watering system on top and you can look that up. I'll maybe try and show you a video if I've got one of our rig, but it was just, you know, one of these inexpensive drip systems that you can buy in any big box store, hardware store. 
which worked fine, although I think I'm going to probably switch that up this year. Yeah, uh, but don't start watering until after you've gone through the thermophilic phase. So that's when it gets really hot and start. That's the thermophilic phase. And then it starts to cool down. And once it's around 80 degrees F, then you can start your watering so that you maintain that to 60 to 70 percent moisture content. And that at that point, you can also add in worms. So I'm going to end with this last bit of a clip here, which is what you're shooting for. So if you look at this, the consistency of this material, so this is Johnson Sioux compost done right, you can see that this stuff is very putty-like. Oops, sorry. Very putty-like. And that's what we're shooting for in the end. Um, and again, after you get this applied in furrow and your plants start to take off and your soil biology starts to take off, it's super important to maintain that biology. So you need to have cover crops and those cover crops as, you know, Christine Jones and, and David Johnson and his wife, Heijing Sue, and um, Elaine Ingham, all of those people that talk, talk about soil, experts that talk about soil biology say it should be a diverse mix of covers. So I'll end with that.